Okay, so this is today's over the board chess match, league match. So we did all the preparation in readiness for it and um, eventually arrived. Did my prep talk with myself, reminded myself of the things that we've been working on, the things we're trying to avoid, all of those things that we mentioned in the last video, basically. Just watch for the devil finger and just take your time. So we played as black and the opponent pushed through with, again, what looks like an odd looking kind of move. And when they did make that move, I did look at the board and the numbers on the board were um, not the right place. So the black pieces were placed on the white square. So I, I kindly asked if we could um, just change it around because obviously if I'm doing notation, it's going to be incorrect. So we switched the board around and then replaced, replaced the pieces and then restarted again. So I developed the knight out. I'm thinking, well, he's extended the pawn. It's not got anything behind it. It's probably going to put his knight behind it. Don't need to worry too much at this moment in time. My opponent's rating was 1704. Uh, my current rating is 1331. So there's a vast difference again with the um, rating levels, just like in the previous matches. I don't think there's many people my level. <laughs> well, I won't be playing them, I don't think. Um, so we push through with the pawn here. Nice and steady because I'm thinking, well, he's not actually pushed his centre pawns down. So he doesn't look like he's a, an aggressive player. So I'm thinking, well, just take it easy. We don't need to over expand in the centre. And then suddenly they came out with the stonewall looking type thing. And I don't know if you remember, I mentioned about many many moons ago i did use to play like the stonewall type thing so i was fairly comfortable using that type of psychology and so i'm thinking well this might be an interesting game then because it doesn't look like we're going to get blown out of the water with aggressive attacks coming towards us they're probably just going to sit and wait to see what we do and hopefully by then maybe we can find a good position for our pieces but we're no way going to be overextending so we did a little tiny pawn push up just to see what they're going to do and they brought the knight across so yeah um my initial thoughts were they're not really an aggressive player looking more like a positional type thing i'm thinking that's really good for us because maybe we can win a tempo in terms of our movement on the board because we're playing as black so really we we're always going to be second fiddle so I'll bring the bishop through, I'm just thinking, if I can get castled, then maybe this might be an okay game. As, as, as I've mentioned in the previous games, if I can get castled, maybe I can then start, you know, feeling part of the game. It's always that pressure. And then I saw that they're going to look for the Fianchetto thing. And you know my thoughts on the Fianchetto. Um, I do believe it's a bit of a slow type thing, but it can catch you unawares if you're not aware of it. But if you've seen our previous videos, you'll know that I'll do whatever I can to try and block that off. So the key thing for me was this um, e-pawn, seeing whether or not we can actually get that pawn blocked off um, at some stage. So we castled first. I was um and ah and about pushing the pawn up first, you know, to e5 to block it, or king safety. And as I've mentioned to myself in my own mantra, um, king safety is paramount. At this moment in time, if it does push down, we can just take it with our pawn. So we're okay with that. And every one of my moves, I think I took absolutely ages over. Every, I took ages over the moves. But that's long play chess. You can, well, you try and find your better moves. But sometimes it doesn't always work. <laughs> okay, so they brought the bishop through with the slow fianchetto thing. And at this point, I'm thinking, let's block this baby off. I didn't move that fast, obviously. I still took a lot of time thinking about whether I'm going to push the C pawn up to block it. But then I was thinking, I don't really want to block my knight moving into the game. So if they're going to do the slow potato type thing, I want to get my pieces active or at least. So they castled eventually. And then we went for the stonewall looking thing. As, we, as I said, I'm so used to that type of psychology. And whether I don't do it perfectly, but, you know, I understand it. So I'm not going to kind of lose out. So then my knight can sit behind that pawn. 
and um, just rest easy. So it looks really bland and plain. It's like, like a dry game. And it's almost felt like I'd put the I put the blockers on the attempts what the opponent was making in terms of developing their pieces, which was good. It felt okay, but there was 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 something wrong with my position. So they blocked off. So basically, they're just blocking off any attempts of me getting in and around. And my thought process was, well, our dark square bishop is so bad, it's unreal. It's not. It's not in the game at all. But because we're used to this position, we know that we can just bring the bishop to the f8, bring the rook across, and at some point later in the game, it may get into it, but it'll be a struggle. So we bring the bishop through like we do. We like this position for the bishop, and they bring the knight down. Again, we didn't move this fast at all, but, you know, just um, rifling through the moves. So at this point here, I've got a choice to make. I don't have to take the knight. I can bring the bishop back. But I'm thinking, well, he's crowding out the area with the knight, and I'm not, I don't want any of that. Got to be careful not to take the knight with the knight, because obviously then the pawn gets a, a fork on the bishop and the, and, the, and the knight. So after a long thought, I thought, well, let's just get this baby off the ball, because what we can do is have... I can't do the arrows on this, can I? Well, I can, but it's going to mess everything up. Can I do the arrows? Oh, I can do the arrows. Nice one. All right, yeah, so what I was thinking was getting the knight here. This is why it took so long, the, the actual move, thinking of all the continuations. And basically, in a nutshell, if he does take, which pawn do I take with? You know, and I'm thinking, oh, well, do we take with this one just to keep it a sort of symmetrical line? And we've got this, this um, open file here that we're going to contend with. So we did bring the knight up. And then we captured. So feeling fairly half decently okay about it. Only thing is my poor bishop, I knew that it's not going to be in the game. You know, so we're still going to continue potentially looking to come here. We're thinking that the queen's going to be bouncing here at some point or here attacking the pawn. But again, it seemed manageable enough. I did have the picture of him coming here, attacking here, having two pieces on you know, on the bishop, but we do have the queen and the rook there, and we could also bring the king across as well. So lots of little minute thoughts were going running through my head, and I did think that their strength was basically coming down here. Also, the fact of they potentially, earlier on, they had that kind of potential threat of the pawn pushing down, but that got knocked on the wayside when we started messing around in the centre here. So the rook comes and attacks the bishop, so we bring the rook across, and all simplified. And then they did this rook move, I thought, well, that's a bit odd, isn't it? But then I'm thinking, you know, that strength side is they're going to try and push down here. We potentially can just bring the pawn up. If he does take, then we can replicate. But somehow they're going to have some type of weight along this file. But I wasn't too concerned about it because I couldn't do much. I was sat here at this type of position. I went, that's a bit odd. But I'm thinking, well, my position's not great. I've got a lovely knight, but it's not in the game, is it? I've got a bishop that's definitely not in the game. So we need to get trading down if we can. So we moved the bishop out of the way. And then they took a long time over this move and they brought the bishop here. I was a bit shocked. I thought, well, what, what is that? I'm still going to trade down, are we? So I'm taking the rook. They take with the bishop. They just didn't want to go through the exchange of the queens in that sense. So I understood that. So we brought the queen looking to double up with the rook on this side. And I, when I was going through these motions, I did think to myself, you know, there's no real point doing this because this bishop's going to come here. Everything's going to be blocked off. But I thought, well, what if they don't? You know, what if they don't bring their queen hit bishop here? Then we could at least look to get the queen you know, so that was my option. All the while, I'm, I am thinking, well, if they do come down here and attack, do we have enough pieces to protect? It didn't look that strong initially. So they did push down and we pushed the pawn up looking to support. So I'm, I'm sat there thinking, well, that's, there's no problems there. And then we capture, capture. Bishop moves out of the way. And then we continue with the rook move, attacking, well, going towards attacking the queen. 
and then they do bring the bishop down. So it's like, okay, fair enough. What do we do now? So it's all kind of locked in in the center. <clears throat> so I'm fairly used to this type of um, position. Um, feeling really sorry for the bishop. How does it get in the game? But it is doing a key thing. It is supporting this pawn because the queen is not looking to stay there forever. So we're looking to try and trade off the rooks now. So if we get the opportunity, we can bring the rook here and attack the, attack the rook. But then they bring the queen here, looking to basically trade off the queen this way. But it's going to be to their benefit because they will be taking the pawn. So I have to resign myself to the fact that potentially the, this pawn is going to be going. But for some, in some situation, if that pawn is going to be going, we will be able to get our rook up here and to be able to block this pawn off at least. And we could try and fashion a drawn type of position. So in this particular game here, um, I can feel the world of hurt coming in on me. And how do I jostle the position as best possible? So I decided to bring the knight across, looking to protect the area here. But in essence, I'm looking to get my rook supporting the queen, because the queen is looking to come and attack here. Get the rook here. If there's any other fancy shenanigans, if he does take, then we can take. And if there's anything else that they want to do, like bring the bishop into the game, we can actually bring the knight here and block. We know this pawn is going. We've lost the tempo in that aspect. And as we said before, the rook potentially can come here once his rook does take this pawn somewhere and we can put pressure on it. And then we had the vision of them coming back, obviously protecting with the rook, and we can just block the pawn off and attack this pawn here. Even though it's protected by the bishop, it's holding the bishop to ransom. The king's going to have to come across and defend it. And that's the way that I saw it. And then at this point, the bishop was doing a grand job protecting the pawn, but didn't really want it protecting the pawn forever. But we would have to deal with these same numbered pawns on this side, because obviously the king will be coming down, trying to support as best possible, support this pawn, and try and get these pawns down to be active. But we can look at an equalization in that area. Only issue and concern I had was, this is why I took so long. Um, I ended up getting down to like a minute. Like in that last game as well, I think in the previous game as well, I got right down to the, the bottom. I never used to before, but now I'm enjoying savoring the moments of actually, you know, selecting the moves and just enjoying the chess game though, rather than thinking, oh, I've got to move fast. You don't have to move fast. Take your time, have a cup of tea, a slice of cake. So I digress. The queen comes down, attacks the, que uh, attacks the queen. We bring the rook across, knowing full well we're losing the pawn. So once you understand what you're going to lose, I'm, I'm then trying to look at, well, how can I gain something from it? The bishop comes down and attacks the queen and we bring the knight across and block it. So the queen takes and we take and we know this is happening. Rook comes down and now we're attacking the, the pawn. So we've gone through all of that thought process already. I'm bringing the rook up now, blocking. So it's got the threats of attacking the pawn. So it's going to, well, it's basically kind of forcing the king to make its way across, you know, to come and support so that the bishop can then start coming around. Only place I can see that it's going to sit is here. So we don't need to worry too much as long as we can get our pawns activated, get the king moved up a little bit. And then basically, from what I could envisage, the bishop's just going to be going up and down, up and down, up and down looking for some type of draw type thing. There, are, there were thoughts of getting the bishop here and then trying to get to here, trying to get to the um, rook on this side. So that was a, a vision of mine. The other thought was coming here and then coming here and then coming here, but that was going to be too long. And plus his rook would just come down and put a check on the bishop and we'd be kind of lost because then if we did come here to continue he'd just come here and then is attacking the pawn and nothing can defend it so a lot of thoughts were going in in my head there i'm thinking well we're on the back foot really here they're they're a little bit more positive they're plus one um, but that plus one really isn't doing any danger it's just that my rook is not active really did have thoughts of bringing the rook across here as well looking to challenge around this area. But I'm thinking, well, no, I don't really want to take the chance of this pawn just ramping down. 
So the king starts making its way down. We've mentioned this story. And we need to make space for our king. Try to elevate it a bit. And as we mentioned, now they're just going to try and open up the space around there, try and get some advantage. So we did capture. Again, took ages over this move. I think about at this point here, I was about 1 minute and 47. I think I remember that correctly. 1 minute and 47 seconds. But it does have an increment of 10 seconds. And because we've been practicing the blitz and the bullet type stuff, um, that does come into play quite nicely. And what it subliminally does as well, it, it makes the opponent move fast because they think, oh, you're down on time. So they start moving quick. He had like 35 minutes. <laughs> he had 35 minutes on his clock, but he was kind of moving quicker than what he was doing before just to try and put pressure on my time. But I felt really comfortable because... You know, 10 seconds is a lifetime. So they captured. And then we bring the bishop up. We're trying to squeeze into spaces. Trying to get around here, maybe, you know, to try and get this sort of situation going. But obviously expected the pawn to drop. But what if they hadn't? You know, then we would have been able to. But that was the attempt. So then we said, well, OK, if they do drop down here, we can push the pawn up. I was thinking, because I was always thinking the rook is going to be coming here, putting pressure onto the bishop. And if they had done that, then maybe the king comes here or something like that, you know, to defend the bishop. Or maybe the bishop just moves back. But the problem we've got is he's still going to try and squish it. But I couldn't really see a full continuation for that for them. So I, I kind of didn't care too much about it. I thought, well, if he does come down, then the king can come and defend or the king can just move closer here towards the bishop. I didn't really see what the issue was with that. I mean, if the pawn does take, then the king can take. So in my head, I'm thinking that's not a bad that's not a bad thing. So we, we pushed onto the pawn and they did capture and we captured with the queen. So the bishop's just holding on to this pawn for dear life, really. Poor rook's not in the game either. And they're very active. So just moving the bishop up and down, like we said. And did have the ideas of potentially getting here. But this rook is too slow to the party. You know, getting the rook here, potentially putting some pressure on here, some something like that. But decided, well, I don't think that's going to work because we have the element of this damn rook coming here and attacking the pawn if we did come off of that line. So then our king is going to be held to ransom because of the diagonal of the bishop. There'll be checks all over the place. So the bishop comes in, locks itself in there. Um, I wasn't scared of that one because I thought, well, it's not hitting anything of ours. So I moved the bishop again, backwards and forwards. And then they had an epiphany. They decided to come around the other side. So we bring the king looking to block off the rook. Um, in my head, I'm just using up the 10 second increment quite easily, just flicking it back, just blocking. They continued, so we moved the king out of the way and then they pushed the pawn down. So at this point, I must have been on like 35 seconds or something like that. A crowd had gathered around the table and um, it's fairly interesting to look at the clock, look at the position. And I just didn't want his rook getting in there, you know, facing us off anyhow, somehow. Any support from, you know, the bishop type thing. Didn't want any of that. So I thought, well, I'm pushing here. I, there's nothing else that can actually take the pawn. I suppose he could come back around again and maybe put a check on. But we have the stealth bishop. But maybe he could have come and attacked the bishop this way. I don't know. So it looks like they're deciding to do that and we bring the bishop up now. So the bishop's now guarding this square, it's guarding this square. It could still continue coming down. I don't know how much weight that would have because we could just leave the bishop there. So we can move the bishop and then at this point I offered the draw and he extended the hand and we agreed the draw. Let's see what the evaluation says. Plus 